Hi, I'm Claire and I'm here with Benny, my mate from uni, from Armadale in New South Wales. And we're here to talk about mental health conversations because we believe having starting to have conversations is going to be really powerful for positive mental health. So, Benny, welcome from Armadale. What did you get up to on the weekend? Yeah, thanks, Claire. No, good to see you again. Um, we cut a bit of firewood yep. on uh, Sunday and we had a long weekend on Monday. So, um, great. Yeah, went out in the bush and uh, to a friend's place and cut some firewood. We've got the fire going right. pretty regularly now. Because it's winter there, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. It's uh, winter's just started. Yeah. Uh, and Armadale gets pretty cold. So did you have a fire pit? or? Uh, well, we've got a fire in the house, and uh, so we're just keeping warm like that. So it's Brilliant. good to be inside and with the fire going, keep warm. Good. Yeah. I remember those winter nights in Armadale. Nobody could ever believe that it sometimes snowed. And you mentioned on one of your challenges that it was snowing that yeah. day. You showed us the snow. I think Lovely. it was the last day of my push-up challenge it was snowing. So that was oh, pretty brilliant. Good. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. So I'm just going to ask you a quick question, Benny. How did it make you feel when you were cutting the firewood? What, what were your feelings on the weekend? Yeah, well, it, it's always good because you, you go out to do a job and... And you get it done, and it's done, and you've got something to show for it. Um, yeah, I think I think in people's a lot of people are in jobs that uh, it's hard to define um, that sort of you know what did I achieve today? I, I think it's yeah. all about fulfilment, and uh, I don't I don't mean that uh, cutting firewood uh, necessarily fulfills you, but I, I love I love it when you when I'm able to do a job and, and get something done and see something for it. Completely. Yeah, brilliant. So the reason why I asked you that question, Benny, is because we had the same question from two viewers who are your friends from work or old friends from yeah. work. Do you want to? That's right. Introduce them and have a shout out to them. Yeah, well, there's uh, Joff and uh, Verity, and yep. uh, Verity pretty works for the same company, and Joff, Joff used to used to work for us as well, and they're they're very uh, very good friends, and they've yep. asked a, a couple of good questions. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was on the prevention side. Um, and I, know, I'm, it's really funny because I was really wanting to get to the prevention side because the prevention is so, so important um, for yeah. our mental health. And I'm so glad they asked the question so early because what I see mental health as is that we've got good mental health as well as mental health concerns. So, Benny, I just want to ask you, when I use the term mental health, what, what goes into your head? What, what do you think of? I, I guess uh, we, these days we get flogged with, uh, with well-being. You know, so many workplaces now have well-being programs, they have well-being ambassadors. Yeah. I know that we have, we, we've got a really strong focus on well-being and yeah. you know, the whole are you okay thing. And uh, so when, when I think about mental health, I... I, I just, uh, which I've got to admit, I, I wasn't wasn't really tuned into it before I started doing that push up challenge, and then it really did focus yeah. me on on what mental health is all about. And there's so much in it, and uh, you know, particularly with anxiety, um, anxiety is the most common mental health uh, condition in, in Australia. Um, yeah. You know, it affects one in three women, one in five men. So yeah. on you know, on average, one in four people, and so really, when when I think about mental health, I I think about people's well-being, and yeah. and one one of the things I picked up um, with on the prevention side of things was that, that I read tonight actually. Yeah. I said the sooner people with with anxiety get support, the more likely they are to recover. Definitely. So I, yeah. I, I presume that that applies to you know most most mental health yeah. conditions. And Verity actually asked a more detailed question around about anxiety and depression. And yeah. um, she asked if they were the same things. Um, so we're, let's talk about that one next time, Verity, because that's it's quite detailed. But anxiety and depression go hand in hand. And a lot of the time, the diagnosis can be that people have anxiety and depression. But we'll go through the difference next time as well. Um, but Let's mm -hmm. go back to the preventative measures. So mental health for a lot of people, what I found is conjures up this picture of the negative. If you talk about mental health, you're talking about people who are not coping. 
Whereas yeah. well-being is people who are coping. So for yeah. me, the question of preventative measures is really, really key. And what I look at it as is emotional fitness. So when I say the yeah. term emotional fitness to you, Benny, what, what do you think of? What, what, what goes through your head when I say, well, let's look after our emotional fitness? Well, I, I'm, uh, I, I like my fitness activities. So yeah, I, I immediately sort of think of fitness and I think of the physical side of things. And, yep. and, and I, think of, uh, I actually think of Joff and I think of the amount of work that you have to do to stay physically fit. Yeah. You, know, you, have to, you have to work at it. You have, to, you have to push yourself. You have to be committed. And uh, you know, I think there are probably a lot of similarities between physical fitness and emotional fitness. You, yeah. you really have to be conscious of it and work at it. Yeah, you do. You do on your emotional fitness. And we all have our ups and downs. And I'm just thinking about the coronavirus. A friend of mine said the other day, she feels like she's a, on a corona coaster. She calls it the Corona Coaster, like a roller coaster. Her emotions are up and down. And yeah. personally, I've really worked on my emotional fitness. And out of the 12 weeks that we've had lockdown, I've had four days where I felt really down. So what I've done is worked out what's been the trigger. If we can think about what the triggers are for ourselves, then we can prevent them. And I yeah. bounce back quite quickly for that. So it's how do I bounce back? So you mentioned Joff with regards to exercise. So tell us a bit more about the exercise that Joff does. What does he do? Is that to release stress? What, what, what doesn't he do? Well, what he doesn't does, he do? Uh, I can't wait to meet you, Joff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he, uh, at the moment, he's doing quite a few push-ups, but he's an ultra wow. marathon runner. So he does wow. a lot of running. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he does a lot of running. He does. Uh, he does some uh, resistance training. He does just yeah. about everything you can think of. But, so what um, a lot of people do is they do exercise. And Joff's question was for prevention, something other than exercise. So what a lot of people do is, and I know myself, I used to do this. I used to do exercise to get over my stress, to relieve my stress. Yeah. But what we want to do is try to turn it around. So the question I asked you earlier was, what did you do that you enjoyed over the weekend? You know, how do you feel about what you did? So it's thinking about what makes us happy. And now I do exercise because it makes me happy. And it's preventing the stress before it happens. Does that make yeah, sense? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of like crowding it out so unhappiness can't get in. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So there's a guy called a psychologist. His name's Martin Seligman. I'm going to write him up on the comments. We'll also put your link on the comments um, about he's written a few books on authentic happiness. And it's really thinking about what makes us happy. So, so Benny, I want to find out from you. I want to have a shout out to Margot Morrison because she's probably one of the most positive people I know. I love Margot, yeah. hadn't seen her for 30 yeah. years. So at the reunion mm. and she made a comment that she wanted you to keep going with the yeah, right. challenge. Yeah. And I said, yes, please. We want to do a standing ovation and you keep going. And your comment <laughs> back was, it's quite addictive. So was that addictive in a positive way, the challenge? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And um, why was that? What made you so happy about doing it, Peter? Well, I, I was getting a sense that I was actually helping people. Um, yes. I wasn't just getting on Facebook and just doing push-ups. I started to, I started to look into it and and share a few of the facts and figures yeah. around mental health and and uh, and, and it, it it's very it's very good to get to get comments back and people say well that you know that was really interesting and we we Definitely. got value out of that. It, it, yeah. Helping people gives you a, a sense of um, a sense of well-being, I guess, and. And, and happiness to know that you're helping people. So um, it's huge, it actually. Was, yeah. Psychologists have proven that. The, yeah, the right. more that we help people, the more that we give, the less stress we have and the more positive we are. So that was lovely. Yeah, right. And the, the other thing I saw it as was it gave you a sense of purpose for 25 days. It did. Yeah, yeah. It really did. And uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one, you know, a lot, lot of people that were doing that challenge. And I, I, I did get a sense that it was interesting watching Verity do her push-up. She was really so strong towards the, uh, yeah. 
towards the end she was going low and slow and and uh, yeah. i was really impressed with her physical strength and and uh i haven't spoken with her about it but i i also got a sense that she was um you know that that it was that it was uh a positive influence on on her mental health as yeah. well yeah brilliant yeah. so it's it's thinking about what actually makes us happy what gives us purpose especially through the corona coaster what's going to give yeah. us purpose i've done a couple of 30 day challenges myself yeah um they're not ones yeah. i put on facebook they're just yeah. ones that um, my family decided would do different ones and one of them i did that has really been so positive for me with my mental health and i never thought it would be was to meditate for 10 minutes a day for 30 days yeah right. and guess what started it on the 1st of april or the 4th of april or something and i'm still doing it yeah okay yeah and yeah i haven't had a go at that but i'd yeah. uh, i'd be interested to i've never done meditation ever i'm probably not a meditative type of person but uh i think i'm willing to give anything a go now yeah I, uh, so funnily I'm enough just re re yeah i'm reading so so much about different things that can help you yeah. for, for, for us of course it's it's exercise it's pets uh, yes pets. that's a big one with pets you know even yeah. patting your pet gets the hormones going in your body touching the fur patting your pets you've always yeah. loved your dogs benny i remember your dog at uni what's your dog's mm. name oh we had a few dogs we had a german shepherd called elsa she that's right pet. remember my, elsa my brother's dog yeah anyway. yeah so Maybe we should talk about meditation another time because it's quite detailed and we've probably good. said enough tonight. But um, so what I want yeah. everyone to think about is for the preventative, let's not think about how do I get rid of the negatives. Let's think about, like Martin Seligman says, how do we build positive thoughts, positive routines, positive activities to make us happy, to make us happy. Yeah. So what yeah. are you going to do this week, Benny? Ooh, ooh, ooh. We'll have another one on the this mental week. health side. Well, to make you happy, what's an activity that we can do? <laughs> well, I, uh, you know, I'm I'm lucky. Uh, I've got a good family, and yeah. uh, I, I do get a I do get a lot of uh, happiness um, from spending yeah. time with uh, with my family. Uh, Tom, Tom was back at school today after. Yeah. You know, he's been home homeschooling since late March, I think. And uh, it was his first day back in the classroom today, so uh, yeah, that that was pretty big for us. Um, yeah, I had Josh back, back, back yesterday. Into the, the new yeah. normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's but, it's a uh, different normal again, isn't it? I found it really hard to adjust back to driving back to school. <laughs> yeah, and I think you know this whole COVID isolation thing has been pretty challenging for most people. It has. Um, and and it, it will put a lot more pressure on uh, on on mental health for sure. Yeah. Well, I've already read some papers. I was reading a paper this morning actually, um, and I, I'll tell you about another time. But it, I think we could talk forever, so I think we'll we'll cut this one. But there's yeah. so much about mental health with the Corona coaster. It is a yep. Corona coaster. So many people. So thank and, you. And just just uh, last and Claire, just that paper that that uh, I, I think a few people will be interested in looking at mm -hmm. was the one. It's uh, evidence check prevention and early intervention for adults with mild to moderate depression. That that's the one that I've just started reading, and um, I'll send you the link and you can post that. Um, oh, thank you. With, with this as well, this brilliant conversation. So it's, it's been good catching up and uh, great. Yeah. Thank Get, you. Getting a lot out of it, and uh, we'll see see you next time. See you next time. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Claire. Bye.